what are some differences in midwifery from America and Europe that you know? Great question. I've worked with a number of midwives from Germany, from the UK, from Austria, um, and Spain, and I would say, in general, the European midwifery scope is smaller than the American midwifery scope. Um, now, there's a lot of variations even in American midwifery, state to state and license to license, but in general, um, the, the, the variations uh, around handling complications and dealing with emergencies Community-based midwives in the U.S. do a lot more than community-based midwives in Europe. And I think that's mostly due to the fact that our healthcare system is not integrated. So in other words, we have to um, because there's no backup really to get involved there. When you're practicing in the community in the U.K., you can have an ambulance sitting outside the house. Um, you can transfer and talk to a physician and tell them exactly what you need, and they will generally respect and do that. That's not the case in the U.S. Um, however, European midwives have a lot more scope around contraceptive uh, prescriptive authority um, and around um, health care in general, prescribing different medications like for glucose intolerance or for thyroid issues and those kinds of things. So it's kind of a trade-off. Um, but at the birth itself, American midwives tend to have a broader scope. I hope that helps. Um, here in Belgium, the gyno does most of the births. Yes, community-based midwifery in many European countries is not f super accessible. Um, and midwives are oftentimes used as generalists or hospitalists or um, day laborer. <laughs> they do the prenatal, the postpartum, and they don't actually do a lot of the clinical care uh, during the birth. I know that could be really frustrating. Uh, asking, are there lots of home births in America? Um, no, there's not lots, uh, but there are uh, a growing number. Um, since 2007, uh, the home birth rate has uh, doubled every 10 years. And then during 2021 and 22, the home birth rate went up 21 and 22 percent correspondingly, ironically, to those years. So we've had a real jump during COVID. Uh, but still, you could say that in most parts of America, the home birth rate is still around 1%. There are hot hotbeds of high home birth adoption, um, and those areas are moving towards 2 and 3% use. And then, of course, there's the valley outside of Anchorage, Alaska, where they're doing 25% uh, home birth or community-based birth and birth centers. So there's certain areas where it's quite high. Um, and, and that's exciting to see. Portland, Oregon has a very high home birth rate. Um, so, so does um, Flagstaff and um, Tempe, Arizona has a pretty high community-based birth rate. Um, and there are certain areas in Texas as well. Um, but it's, it's growing. Uh, we're still not at what I would call critical mass. When you hit pi, 3.14%, then you can say you've hit critical mass. And that means that we've got such high adoption rates that the entire society knows what it is and considers it normal. And we have not hit that yet in America, so hopefully we'll get there.